god. with another Alienware pre-built gaming PC to review. This one we spent $5,000 on. It hurt to do so. If you're wondering what $5,000 gets you in a pre-built gaming PC, it's not custom water cooling, at least not in this one. It's an i9-12900KF and an RTX 3090. Also 64 gigabytes of DDR5 4400 memory. So. That's good. Anyway, uh, we also paid an extra $30 to get the Lunar Light version of the chassis. Alienware made a bunch of fanfare a couple months ago about how it had improved its design and issued a new version of the Alienware Aurora series cases and builds, and that's what this is supposed to be. So we're going to give them another chance. We're going to look at this. Uh, quick spoiler, our intent was to do one combined review with all the benchmarking and the teardown in one video like we normally do. but. There was a lot going on here, so it's two videos. It's not for a good reason. This video is brought to you by us. We bought this $5,000 trash heap with our own money so that we could provide you with a real consumer review and experience. For two days only, you can use code FAILIONWARE to get 10% off anything on the GN store. This directly supports our ability to buy products for review and also gets you a great deal on high quality products like our heat resistant, durable Volt mod mats for PC building. The mod mats are almost out of stock again, so if you want one, order ASAP. These include PC wiring diagrams, screw tracking grids, they're great for use with heat guns and tube bending, and more. We also have our 3D coaster packs in stock and shipping now, and they've been flying off the shelves. This is a unique item that you can use every day, and it includes PC components on it for some creative flair for the hobby. Head over to store.gamersnexus.net to support our work, and hopefully we'll find a good computer to review one day. So part one here is going to be focusing on the completely vexing mechanics of trying to repurpose what appears to be, functionally, a 1990s case into modern parts with a 12900KF, which pulls upwards of 240 watts, uh, and a 3090, which is also very power hungry, cramming all of that into this small box with a 120 millimeter closed loop liquid cooler that's mounted to a chassis that's built for 80 millimeter fans. We're gonna get to all of that. We also will have a part two though, and that one's going to talk about the benchmarks and the thermal performance because um, it deserves its own video. Uh, separately, in the second video, we're going to be talking about how Dell is back to its slimy tactics. If you're lucky, you might even get a computer with the warranty that they force upon you at checkout. Yes, that program is back, $9.99 a month, included by default, but not for the first month. That way you don't notice the charge on your card and it just starts pinning you forever after that. For the cost, we spent about $4,600, $4,700 on this before taxes and other small fees ended up being about $5,000 US for the entire build. It's the most expensive pre-built we have ever purchased. So please help us out by visiting store.cameraznexus.net. Seriously, if you want us to continue reviewing pre-builds of any value at this point, because this one uh, was expensive. Okay, let's get started with the teardown and see how it does. As a reminder, this is how this works. I buy it anonymously. Patrick does the whole review process before we ever open it, and this is actually my first time really looking at it. I haven't looked into the panel until now. We do this so that you can see the real reaction that I have to it, and we can all experience this atrocity together. So when I looked in here, as I said 3090, I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be, this is gonna be real bad. <laughs> A nice uh, maybe five millimeters for the 3090 to breathe through. So that'll be fun to look at. Externally, a couple things to look at. So really nice attention to detail here where Alienware, you might be able to tell, Alienware has wrapped its plastic with plastic. So the plastic protects the 30 year old metal chassis that's underneath it. We wouldn't want that to change by accident or intentionally. And uh, then the plastic protects the plastic that protects the, the three-year-old chassis underneath it. So, good. That's good. The back of this thing, check this out. I really liked this feature. This is the first thing I noticed right before we started filming. See that? That set of holes for a fan to be mounted on the back where uh, you can see the four holes for a fan. You can see the slight mesh for it to breathe. And what I really like, 
is that the radiator here has a custom mount to socket into the back of the chassis because Dell couldn't be bothered to retool its ancient already piece of shit chassis to fit anything. Like, look at this. What is this, an 80 mil fan hole spacing? Yes, that's for an 80 mil. So because Dell couldn't be bothered to update its chassis to fit beyond an 80 millimeter fan, and because they had to put a 120 mil CLC in there, uh, or at least some kind of better cooling because it's a 12th gen CPU inside of a completely choked off box that basically represents a furnace, Dell then put itself in a position where it had to custom make the world's most contrived imbecilic mount for a radiator that I've ever seen because uh, there's nothing else they could do other than make a quality product. But that costs money, so I'm not gonna do that. And then on the front, this is the new part. Are you ready? So here's the new part. Uh, the difference between this one and the old one is that this is the high airflow design. Can you tell where the airflow is? I'm glad we have this camera out today because we're gonna need a, a real tight zoom to show it. The airflow is over here. And there's a little bit of airflow here Sorry, a lot of airflow here. There's nowhere for anything to breathe, and they're all really hot parts. And Dell is so shoved in the sand or up its own ass, I'm not sure which, its head is somewhere, that it thinks that a 120 mil CLC is enough to correct for what is ultimately uh, an, an outdated, outmoded design instead of just like putting it, there are other cases. They could just rebrand one. So this is, it just, it actually pisses me off. Uh, here's the cooler. Looks to me like an Ace Attack solution. We'll look closer in a second. I hesitate a little bit on that, but uh, very short tube. So it's a custom cooler in a sense. It's a joke that this is thought of as anything good because, so 120 mil CLCs uh, are bad. The, we've reviewed these in the past. Liquid coolers are exceptionally good at the high end. You can't get the same level of performance out of an air cooler, even if it's a really good air cooler. We have charts for this in our CPU re cooler reviews. Maybe we'll put one on the screen. But your know, liquid coolers have a place. They're very competitive. You can get better noise levels for a given temperature than an air cooler. But 120, that doesn't happen. 120 is just not enough to, to deal with it. And you're still dealing with all the noise. Uh, you're dealing with weird fitment. So anyway. I'm not too happy about that. So it, it's about 14 or so millimeters of space right there. So that's not great for the GPU. And the GPU is air-cooled. It's one fan, two fan video card. That card, if it's the same Dell 3090 as we saw before, is actually not completely terrible. But um, it's not going to do well where they've shoved it. So. That's not great. Oh. Did you hear the noise? Well, something's pre-broken. That wasn't my fault. So we got a piece of the um, plastic clips came off. You know, there's a solution to this. Don't make the entire case out of plastic. No more breaking plastic clips. I like the RF and EMI shield as if that's going to save this. Oh, also, I didn't mention this earlier. This was new. This was like a big deal in their marketing. They're like, it has a sick window you can see stuff through. Um, I had a case with a window. Here's the backside. I had a case with a window that looked exactly like this in 2004 in the original Antec Land Boy. I don't know if it was called the Air or not. It's the original Land Boy, though. Uh, acrylic window bolted to metal. It's like the oldest way to do it. There's standard parts. Just use them. The board is black, though. They've painted the PCB this time. OK, I need to start actually taking this apart. So a couple things. There's an AVC fan in the front. Looks like a 120 mil. And that is just doing a front-to-back airflow path. 
two sticks of green RAM in the black PCB, so we haven't improved our attention to detail that much over at Alienware. Uh, for five grand, you know, this is something I actually care about. Normally, normally we don't, but this is a lot of money. The bottom here, the instructions say, warning, light bar is not a handle. It's talking about the... I'm sure it acts like a handle. Power supply disassembly is explained here. In many pictures that are uh, progressively smaller. There's actually another fan down here with this big plastic uh, vent that's supposed to direct the air straight over the video card. The only reason you would need that much velocity, that high of an LPM for the air, is because the card is so smashed up against the power supply shroud that it can't breathe without it being force fed down into the card. I'm a little overwhelmed on how to disassemble this. Okay, time to figure out how to unbuild a computer because Dell can't do it the way everyone else does. We are going to be working on our mod mat. So this is the PC building anti-static mod mat that you can grab on store.cameraxnexus.net. Highly ruggedized material. It is heat resistant for things like tube bending and also has a lot of very useful and convenient wiring diagrams, memory module layouts, things like that. Okay, and that also directly funds us buying more of these types of things. Oh, wow. Why is there there's so much mechanical bullshit in this? It's like just a bunch of parlor tricks, I feel like. Um, stuff that doesn't need to exist. Anyway, that's the GPU bracket. Uh... Well, to be fair, if it's sagged, it's not like it has very far to sag, so... Okay. All right, video card's coming out. Oh, no, it's not. Just kidding. There's more GPU support over here. This... That thing right there. That's GPU support also. What is this? This is... Biz I feel like I'm solving a puzzle in a... Like an Indiana Jones movie, except that... Prize is not something I want. Oh, okay. Look at that. Like all this stuff. This is, it's so much mechanical engineering that doesn't need to be done, that doesn't make it better. So now this is free. So this thing is screwed into the video card, but was not actually screwed into this. It was just seated in it, which is fine, I suppose. Um, that is a lot of GPU support that doesn't need to be there. One of those would have been more than enough. Okay. <laughs> There's the video card. Uh, Dell Green PCB, that's fine, honestly. I think we've tested this card. Yeah, there's actually a, a heat pipe in the back plate right here. So it's got memory on the back side right there. This doesn't cover the whole module, but it's not bad. There's a heat pipe in here, and this is a card we've already benchmarked and looked at. Actually, if it is the same as the other one we looked at, not terrible. So there is that. It's it's um, one of the few things that is not like engineered into back in a circle, back into being a useless part. It's actually another fan I hadn't noticed before. There it is. So multiple different types of fans here. You can see the tachometer sticker where uh, this tells me Either it didn't have a tack readout or Patrick didn't trust it. Uh, either one is telling. When he was testing it, he's added a tack readout. And then we've got this fan with uh, also a different blade count and design on the back. So the motherboard, you can see, extends out to the front panel I.O. That's out there somewhere. So that's where our front I.O. comes from. It's going to be these right here. Instead of coming from a daughter board on the case or attached to the frame, it comes off the motherboard, which we've already talked about in Dell computers as being a proprietary way to design obsolescence into your computers so that nobody can ever replace it with a normal part, at least not if they want all the functionality. And you can't really take this board out of this case and put it into any other normal case or any competing manufacturer's case because it is specially designed by Dell so it achieves the maximum value, I guess, of being unusable anywhere else so they can extract more money from you when you need to 
just buy another computer later. This is not standard. It looks like this is another instance of, probably Dell has repurposed a server power supply. I'm guessing the power supply is actually pretty good. Last time we looked at it, Dell power supply was, despite, despite its looks, it was a pretty good power supply. It came from server land, though, that's why. Anyway, this is a non-standard uh, layout on the motherboard for power and non-standard connections. Really short cables, too. You're not really going to be able to use these anywhere else. Not quite ATX12VO, even though it looks like it. So it's a 10-pin, uh, but this is not an ATX12VO power supply. So that's how it mounts. There's one screw that goes in, and then it sockets. Uh, man. You know, everywhere I look, though, on this computer, I'm seeing bloat. Just bloated uh, construction costs, bloated design, bloated engineering costs, bloated hours of work, because you're doing all this to do something that in every other computer on Earth, four screws can do. Um, and you still have to put four screws in, by the way. So it's not bypassing the existing problem. It's just making a new problem fit onto an old problem, which is the 80 mil mounting. Although I do kind of wonder if they could have just put the, I guess they would have had to retool the chassis a little bit to fit it, so anyway, that's silly. For power, we've got a standard four pin uh, PWM fan header. We have a non-standard seven pin thing. <laughs> pump, fan one. So that was plugged into fan underscore pump. And then that has its own seven pin header too. No, wait, that's more than seven pins. What is that? Look at this. Why is there a spring up there? Oh, that's for the uh, side panel. All of this. Wow, man, look at that. That's all for the side panel. There's so many ways to do that that don't involve all of this. I'd be impressed if, what a terrible computer this would be to have to build multiple of every day feel bad for the team on the assembly line. This is awful. This is like, a, this skill doesn't transfer to any other company. I know how to build Alienware computers. Although to be fair, if you can build this, you could probably build anything because they've actually made it a lot more complicated. Oh. oh, all right, nice, perfect. So we've done the two worst possible things. So Dell didn't want to put a separate board in this panel and have wires running into the case. So they put all the USB and front panel stuff on the motherboard and ran it through the front panel. And then they still ran a wire to the front panel anyway for LEDs. Good. That's good. That's, oh, that's not a handle. Four, eight, 16, good old, good old 20 pin LED cable. Look at this VRM. What a joke. It's a 12900KF. It's a K skew. And this is our VRM heatsink. So if the VRM is small enough to fit under this, like you have problems, or you will at some point, unless these are running at a really high RPM, which we'll talk about later. I guess there is a top fan. That's honestly, it's probably why that fan is there. It's probably largely pull air across the VRM. This, this is the one I'm okay with, all right? That, that's not bad. I like that mechanical design. That's very simple. And it's not pointless. Like you really, it's kind of hard to get a screwdriver in there. So that one I'm okay with. Do we have a load bearing CPU cooler? I think we do. Can't forget to take the front panel I.O. thing off. This this is so mechanically complex. This is crazy. What a horrendous waste of money. Is that why that moves for this? Like, okay. 
The uh, CB cooler is load bearing. Just to answer that question from earlier. So the cooler mounts into the chassis. There's the back of the board. There's a nice touch here too. Look at all this. Look at all that flux and just run off from the SMT lines. Nope, oh, that's not a handle. Oh, look at that, that motherboard shape. That's what I was talking about earlier with the front IO attached to the board. You know, it's not shocking at this point. We've done this. We've looked at this. It's just, it's, it just feels bad when it's on a computer this expensive. This, like this, for five grand, this is your motherboard. This is what you get. Like, what is this? Six layers? Maybe eight? You can hear the quality. In the same way that you can hear the quality in a 1990s McDonald's Happy Meal toy. Can you hear the Ronald McDonald in the motherboard? Uh, I shouldn't unscrew this without supporting it. It's kind of like digging straight down in Minecraft, but it's just not useful anywhere outside of this computer. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is exhausting. So this is 80 plus platinum, as stated before, well, claimed 80 plus platinum. I don't suspect Dell would be fudging numbers there though. They, they seem very unlikely to do that. Uh, let's see, 12 volt, 27 amps on 12 volts. Oh, no, okay. So for 12 volt, 12 volt A can do 36 amps, 12 volt B can do 27, 12 volt C can do 36 amps. So hopefully they've split those for the GPU and the CPU for the higher ones. Can we get, let's start over here. This, this is my graveyard of unnecessary bits and pieces for the case, also the motherboard. And then this, this is the coffin that they were in. And this is some more unnecessary parts and some fans. So concluding just the teardown then, Hopefully you can see now why we decided to just run this as its own video because normally we cut teardowns down to about 10 minutes. There was so much going on with this case. Every screw I pulled out revealed another really abnormal thing that they did. And the oddest part of this is it is actually pretty good engineering. It's just applied in a really stupid way. So it's, it's engineering for the sake of trying to circumvent designing a proper computer, which is sad because you're, you're taking engineers who clearly have some skill, at least mechanically, the people who did all the trying to figure out how to get brackets to fit things where there aren't screw holes because the chassis is friggin' ancient and won't fit anything modern. Uh, you're taking these engineers and telling them to fix a problem that could be fixed by just making a new chassis. And it's not that hard. Much smaller companies than Dell do this. They don't even have to make it. They can just OEM it from someone else, slap their logo on it. It's not like Dell is a foreigner to this concept and call it a day and it'd be better. Dell, just while we're talking here, even ignoring the fact that for a consumer, this is a terrible product and you're doing them a disservice and you should feel bad for that. Uh, let's, let's just pretend none of that matters and all that matters is money. This is really expensive to make. This case is unbelievably expensive. It's asinine, the approach that was taken to get all this to fit together, cram all these springs in there, try to make it work within a form factor that was clearly not built to support a CPU that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 240 watts. It's throttling, by the way. We'll get to that in the next video. And a GPU which is also dropping clocks because it's a 3090 crammed into this piece of shit case. If your solution is we need liquid cooling, make a case that fits it. Anyway, to me, the, the reason I'm, I'm actually kind of upset with this one is because it's just insulting. It's sad, first of all, that people who don't know a lot about gaming PCs, especially people who are prone to take the approach of if I just spend more money, then I won't have any headaches to deal with and everything will be fine. You know, these people are getting basically scammed and conned out of their money for something that's trash. You can get a way better computer from other system integrators or even other OEMs, like probably HP. We'll be looking at one of, well, we'll, we'll be looking at one of theirs soon. Maybe wait on buying those for a minute. So the engineering here, it's, it's only brilliant in the same way that Brian from BPS Customs and I cutting a metal side panel apart to create a fixture to mount 
a reservoir to a 180 millimeter radiator is brilliant. It's brilliant in the same way, which is to say it's sort of uh, <laughs> scrappy. It's sort of scrappy. It's innovative, uh, but not for any good reasons. <laughs> not to not to dane the work Brian and I did. It was a very good cut, Brian. Anyway, this is it's just crazy. So just honestly, Dell and Alienware have completely overlooked the basics. This to me screams executives were shown this project. Uh, someone said, how do we not do new tooling for a case? Tooling's expensive. And someone else said, well, we can engineer around that. And they did, and they showed all the individual pieces to executives who said, this is amazing, you're so smart, let's do it. And no one stopped to think or ask the extremely basic question, which is, what makes a good computer? Dell, that's, that's all you have to ask yourselves when you're planning these. It's what makes a good high-end computer? What makes a good chassis? Not how do we take our existing stuff and drag it along until it's decrepit and falling apart and we have to bolt things onto it to make it continue to function. That's not the right approach. Anyway, enough of that one for now. Uh, check back. Make sure you subscribe to catch the review with the benchmarks and the thermals. It's bad. Uh, but it'll be entertaining at least, and hopefully a lesson for Dell, uh, well, its competitors to learn from. But anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, you can go to store.gamersaccess.net if you'd like to support us in our efforts to continue buying uh, computers of different, well, any price point at this point because this sort of blew out the budget, or patreon.com slash gamersaccess for bonus videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.